Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video and giving me a chance to speak to you. If you are new here, special welcome to you. I would love to have you like and subscribe this video before we even proceed. Children, this is gonna be a doozy of a video. Hi, if you're new here, I'm on a six month no buy. If you wanna know more about that, check th check this out, check that out. There's gonna be a link, a card somewhere. However, one of my subscribers and my friend here on YouTube, Jenny, had asked me to do a video to break down my purchases in the first half of the year. Since I did start my no buy in July, which is the full second half of the year, it is confusing because July is the seventh month. You know, it's a hard math, month math? I don't understand. January, 28, 30 days. There's so many things that, there's so many variables when it comes to months and days, isn't it? This is gonna be a doozy of a video, but instead of just like doing math, I figured we could make it even harder for me, the creator, and we will do some mini reviews. I'll talk about whether or not the product was worth it, whether or not I would buy it again, how I'm feeling now. What I've done is I've tried to go through all my purchases from this year, which I don't really keep track of. I think that's something that I'm going to be doing starting in the new year when I am buying product again, or maybe later in next year when I decide to buy product again, only because I think I do wanna keep a better handle on it. And I, I say that fully because there are some products over here and I, I feel like there are even more products in my drawers that I did not pull out because I could not find like a shipping or anything for it, but I'm sure it happened. I don't know, we're gonna have to go through. And so all of the, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk numbers, we're gonna talk numbers at the end, just like total numbers. I basically broke it down into like how much it would have been full price and how much I believe I spent based on sales and such, pro discounts, Whatever. Uh, let's get in. Let's just let's let's start in January. Let's roll back the tapes. Okay. Some things to keep in mind as we proceed. I worked at Sephora until the end of January. I was. I knew I was. I had already put in my two weeks notice at this point. So I think that every Sephora employee, as on their final days, just goes into a uh, buying frenzy because you have this discount and you have 30% off and you never know when you're gonna use it again. You're never, are you ever gonna get a discount again? Uh, yes, I will. I'm a professional, I'm a licensed esthetician. I'm a professional. I can get a discount at a, a very many places. And if not directly through the company who sells it, there is a store where I could get a pro discount. It's a whole to do. January is a big purchasing month for the first six months of this year. On January 16th, I bought the Hourglass at Night Blush. It's this guy right here. I actually, I use this blush quite a bit. I bought an hourglass blush at some point and I don't know if this was the first one or if another one was the first one. I don't remember. <laughs> but what I do know is that I really like the formula and so I bought a few more while I still had a discount because I liked the blush. And I got very into blush last year and this is just like a continuation of the trend of like me just loving blush so. Uh, I do also think that the Hourglass blush formula is like bar none the best blush formula. It's pretty foolproof. It looks really excellent on the skin. It gives you a nice sheen, but also a nice glow. And this this shade right here is rather dark. It's like a true brick red and I love it. I love it for an intense look. It probably would have gone really well with this look. It's not the one I'm wearing with this look, but it is certainly a beautiful blush. No regrets on this one. The very next day I bought some more product. I bought that one online because it was a new shade and we didn't have it in our store. So I took it upon myself to buy another blush. It's Incandescent Electra. And for a while there, I really actually didn't like this shade of blush too much. I thought it was too pink, but this is what I would say is like the most natural looking blush I have. Whenever I put it on the skin, it is just the hint of flush, the babiest of baby pink flushes. So if I'm doing like a no makeup makeup look or just, you know, wanna go really light on complexion, this is a very nice blush to have. And I reach for it quite a bit having come to that realization. But before then it was, it was not like that. But now, but now we're friends, now we're friends. The next thing I bought was the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Dim Light. I got the 
you know, the face palette that they released for holiday and I really liked this powder. However, I hate putting my brush, like my, my face brush is too big for the face palette and therefore it is very annoying to use out of that. So I bought a big one because I was like, of I, and I use it quite, I use it a fair bit. It's so, it took me a while to realize it's not really truly a setting powder and I don't think it is trying to be, trying to be either. Like, I don't think that's her journey, but it is a nice finishing powder, which, and I did use this today actually as a finishing powder. I apparently, I do use it. Would I buy it again? I don't know. Once I'm done with that one, I don't think it's something that I might re-up on, but we'll see. As we'll see in some later purchases, my taste in makeup ebbs and flows, and so I think that's something that I could come around to or incorporate into the way I like to do my makeup now, just in, not in the step that I expected it to. The next thing I bought was this makeup by Mario Eyeliner. It is the... It's like the flesh shade one, and it's like designed to be used on the lower lash line to make your eyes just appear a little bit larger. I have pretty small eyes. I'm not afraid of black eyeliner, like clearly not today. Like I have lashes on, I have like a lot of depth going on around the eye. But because I have smaller eyes, if I ever wanna give myself the illusion, I like having something like this on hand. This actually replaced a Marc Jacobs Pink of Me highlighter that I had for like five years. So this one I bought this year. So we are still in the same year. We're still doing good. These are not, this is not a product I reach for a lot because again, I'm not afraid of making my eyes look small, but there are times whenever I'm doing my makeup and I just feel like I need a little bit of that wokeness, the little awaken of wokeness, a little bit of wokeness for the day. So I will put that on the lower lash line. I distinctly remember being almost at $100 and my boss who, you know, your leadership has to check you out when you're shopping at the store. So I remember there was a promotion going on and I have this Sephora credit card and if I spent $100, I would get an additional $10 in rewards. And I threw this on. This is the mini Zendo. Now, do I use this enough for it to be warranted? But arguably, I don't use any of my eyeshadow palettes enough for it to be warranted. However, when I do want something simple and easy, like if I don't wanna fuss around with my makeup, I really love having this on hand. I am really into a more condensed color story. For the most part, you're gonna see some contrary things happening in the future, but there was a conscious decision for that and we'll explain whenever we get to those particular items. But for, as far as this goes, this was my second Natasha Denona mini palette. I had the mini retro first and I really like this and I find that they're really good companion pieces. So you, they play really well together. So if you have them both out, you can mix and match. And I really like that about them. I don't, don't use it enough, I don't think. I really kind of wish that you could depot the small ones as easily as the any other size Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette because these ones are not removable. They are glued in. And the last thing I bought on the 17th was the Iced Out Highlighter from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is, no one likes this, I love this. I love this a lot. I reach for it whenever I like feel, hmm, cause it is like an icy gold, which is pretty cool and like unlike any other highlighter I have in my collection. So it definitely adds to my collection. But my favorite time to reach for it is whenever I, I'm doing a look that is a cool tone look, but isn't like purpley. And I hope you know what I mean by that. Like if I'm like doing a green that leans more cool, I feel like this is a very good complimentary highlighter for that. So I have used it quite a bit. It doesn't look like there's a dent in it, but I do reach for this. I do reach for this and it does add something to my collection. I have a lot of highlighters and they're all very specific. And unfortunately it's whenever, they're there when I need them, but for a lot of the time I don't need them. So would I buy this again? No, but I also, you should know that I never tried Amrezy or had the inclination to try Amrezy. So I'm not comparing this to the Amrezy formula. I just think that this formula, uh, this color, I like it a lot for me. On January 18th, I placed what I think is my final Sephora order. So I was like, not gonna have a discount anymore very quickly. I bought the Surat Autographique eyeliner in purple, so purple, and I don't use this quite a bit. And I just did a rant, and I don't know when the video order is gonna come out, but I just talked a little bit about eyeliner and how I don't really use liquid eyeliner that often. And I did want this because I do see myself using it for very specific things, but I probably shouldn't have bought it. This one, 
it's kind of a regret because it does sit in the it does sit in my little you know brush thing upside down just kind of begging to be used I maybe I should just do a very simple look where this is the star and give myself more of a feeling for it because I truly don't really know how I feel about it I love the black eyeliner it's the black autography cut I like that's what I have on today it's like my favorite formula I like that these are refillable. I think that's all very cool. So that's why I really like it. And I like the weight to this pen. It make, I think it's helpful whenever I'm doing eyeliner. And it's brush tip, which is my preferred eyeliner, which I know is not everyone's preferred eyeliner. Shouldn't have bought the purple. Should have just stuck with the black and just kept loving that. And I also bought the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter in the shade Lit. And you can see that we have had we've had a good time. We, and and I know it's like not the whole embossing is gone, like not the whole pressing where you can see the word flex. However, that's pretty good use for me as far as a highlighter go. I, I don't really wear makeup every day. I wear makeup when I'm filming or if I'm at an event to go to, I will put makeup on. And when I say an event, I mean like a friend's birthday, a thing, like if I'm going out, like I'm gonna put makeup on because that's how I like to express myself in those kind of settings. So. I really like this. I think these are either being discontinued. I don't know what's going on with these. They, they were always weird. They've always been weird stock wise. They're like hard to get. So I don't know what's going on with this, but I will say this is a very, what I think 2016 highlighter wanted to be. It's just like, uh, it is, it is just, you can see it from space, highlight blinding. And I love that. And this whenever so this is pretty neutral so if I ever have a look that I feel is simple and I'm like let's add something to the complexion to bring it all up this is the one I'm reaching for if this is going away I'm sad because I used to think I really loved milk makeup and all of their stuff but honestly this is like the only thing that reigns in my collection as a milk product that I hold on to rather near and dear. On January 25th I ordered three products from Friends Beauty. Friends Beauty is a makeup store. I believe it's based out of LA but if you have a professional license of some sort you can use it to get a pro discount there and so they accepted my application and so I do get a pro discount, but I buy brand like you can buy brands there that you can you know of. So I bought the Ritual Defeat highlighter in the shade The High Priestess. And it is like a pink purple shift highlight. And it's so beautiful. I will never ever say that buying one of these is a bad idea. I have more th than I should, but I love them all. And I like the way they all look and I do rotate through them because all of the colors are rather unique and specific. You're not gonna use them for every look. Now they do have a couple highlighters that are more neutral and would work for like an everyday basis, but that's like not the kind of highlighter I'm interested in. This is the kind of highlighter I'm interested in. And I love it just like all, I like it. Uh, I mean, you see where my highlighter, like just imagine this sparkly pink purple just like, going all the way down my forehead and down my cheek. It is just, I like the metamorphic highlighters. It seems like other people like the metamorphic highlighters, but don't be afraid of it because it's a cream. It's, it, it, it the, the benefits outweigh the, the scariness. Because I don't think there are any cons to this highlight, other than if you don't like a blinding highlight that's very sparkly, you might not like this. But I think that's like my, that's my, that's what I want. I truly don't know what I'm gonna say about these up front because okay so I got two color fix from Danessa Myricks in the neon now what my intention was is I have some Kryolan water activated UV liner and these are also UV and I was trying to figure out which formula I wanted more for whenever I wanted to do like a day glow look I haven't done a day glow look <laughs> I haven't done a day glow look since I bought these and I find these intimidating but I have used them before and I've liked them I just I don't I haven't put enough time in with them to like really definitively have a thought on them but I'm gonna have to play with them before the end of the year because my intention in January is to do a reconsidering of my collection as I do my collection tour so I say reconsidering meaning like a declutter, like reconsidering, is this good, thinking about it, whatever, whatever. That's what I wanna do in the new year. So I wanna use these versus the Kryolan water activated paints to see which ones I really do like better and then keep what I like and then get rid of what I don't. But that was what the intention of buying this was because I thought I would like these more. But again, I haven't really done like a day glow fun look in a very quite, quite a while, but if you'd be interested in that, I guess we could do that together, so. Hit me up in the comments if you want to see 
me play with these on, on camera. So for the month of January, I bought 11 items. That's quite a bit of makeup, especially for someone who doesn't wear makeup on an everyday basis. That's quite a bit. But did stop me from buying more in February. Again, you can see how I got to the point where I was like, I really truly need to do a no buy. So Pat McGrath will occasionally do like heavily discounts, heavily discounted lip products. And so I bought two. However, I'm missing one and I don't know where it is. Like for the life of me, I was like, what purse? What bag? Where did it go? So I bought the shade Peach Perversion, and this is Love Potion. And I could have sworn I bought this this year, but also there could be lip gloss just like rolling around my room. It could be somewhere it's not supposed, I have no idea where this lip is, but I bought two of them. Pat McGrath lip glosses are the, my favorite lip gloss formula. I mentioned this quite a few times in other videos is that like once I find a lip product, I'm kind of just like, I would like more shades of that one instead of trying another brand in a different shade. And so because of that, that's why I have these. I also have moved quite a f moved through quite a few of Pat McGrath's lip glosses. Like I have a couple of shades that I'm gonna, I'm about to just, there'll be no more. There's gonna be no more product left in them. So I have no fear that I can finish a Pat McGrath lip gloss even at the way that I, the way and pace that I use lip gloss, I, I do get through them because I have juice plumpy lips and then I like to reapply. I'm gonna reapply. I like to, do, I just, mm, mm, mm. I'm not mad at these. Although I like to use them as toppers and I've kind of found that it doesn't really matter what the shade is. It'll just make your lips look glossy. You really can't tell, like you can't really even see the shimmer. So not so much as toppers, but they are very, they're a little bit, a little bit more different when you put them on a bare lip. Three days later, on February 12th, I bought the Victoria Beckham Smoky Eye Brick in Tweed. And so this, I just wanted to try Victoria Beckham's. Oh, well, okay. So my mirror just, my mirror just fell out. Um, hmm. Like that just happened. All right. Um, oh, it's just coming apart. So, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so this is this. <laughs> I actually really like this, but now I'm having a little bit more of a complex feeling because the mirror just, and the casing holding the mirror just pop, popped out. And it's not like I've used and abused this eyeshadow palette. It'd be one thing if, if I've had it for a year. I've had it since February. And I've used it like, I would say like six or seven times. I wouldn't say that I've used it that much for, okay. Um, I think I just have to move along because uh, wasn't ex wasn't wasn't expecting that. So I don't know why that is. I'm gonna have to see if other people have had that very experience. I just had because on February fifteenth, because I didn't have enough eyeshadow as it was, I bought another eyeshadow palette and I bought the Antiquities palette from Noctex. I really like this. I actually. I like this quite a bit. And what another thing I love is that these also work as singles. Now, sometimes in a palette, I don't feel like I need the packaging, but for this packaging, one, I think it's, you know, pretty, it's pretty gorgeous. It's pretty stunning packaging. And it's the kind of packaging that I don't like, it's not gonna get like filthy over time, you know, with, with the more use I get out of it. So I love that these are removable and I can use them, utilize them as singles. I also like the formula of these. I think the mats are very pretty. Everything about this aesthetic is like very something that I'm into. It's like subculture, although I have subculture, but it's just a little bit different. So I really like these. I'm very drawn to these. This is a palette that I do have to like remind myself that I have because of the way I have my eyeshadow palette drawer set up. It does kind of slide to the back sometimes. And right now I've been at I've been really loving my singles and just trying to use those in association with other palettes and I just haven't thought to use this one. So definitely something that I'm, I don't really regret but didn't definitely need. But it was one of those things where I was like, no one talked about it. And I was like, well, I have to find out for myself. And then I did and I was like, I'm gonna review this on my channel. And you know what I didn't do? Review it on my channel. I think I did a video where I like used it but I don't think I did a video where I like really talked about my experience with it. And again, I think I've used the Victoria palette more than I've used this one because the Victoria palette's more on the forefront of my mind. Although now it's 
dropped to the bottom of my list. On February 24th, I bought the this Burberry Freeze palette. It's the Burberry Essentials Glow palette, and it is a blush, highlight, and bronzer palette. And it has, this is a cream highlight, and then everything else is a baked gelée. I really like this. I, this, I would, I, <laughs> Do I consider it a regret? No. Was it a need? No. But if you're if you're new here, if you've not watched a ton of my videos, I'm currently trying to hit pan on a Burberry bronzer I bought like five years ago. And it, I'm just like not getting to the bottom of it, but I love that bronzer so much. I thought that maybe this would take the place of it so I could move on from that bronzer. However, this is like not really a bronzer and I wasn't really, I didn't really want a cream bronzer, but I did want to try all the things because I've also heard really good things about the highlighter. Actually, this highlighter is what I have on my face today. I really, oh, and this blush. I also have this blush on. So honestly, this face is a lot of this palette. So I, I don't reach for this as much as I should, but I do really like it every time I do. Again, I said this in another video where my face palettes don't live where my blushes you know my single compacts do and so when i'm reaching for one of those items i often reach for that drawer as opposed to the drawer that has the face palettes in it so i do feel that my face palettes get a little bit neglected and i think because of that there'll be something that i try to avoid in the future and just buy like one like one blush one eye, one highlighter so that way i can put it in my compact drawer and i can see it and grab it and use it and love it on february 27th and 28th I don't know who said who said Shantikai and whispered it in my ear, but I kind of had a moment. <laughs> I kind of had a moment. And I really wanted to try Shantikai, but I didn't want to pay full price for Shantikai because Shantikai is notably expensive. I wanted to try it. And then instead of just buying one product and seeing if I liked it, I bought three and then they all came to my house at the same time. So it wasn't like I tried one and then was like, oh, I really like this. Maybe I'll just try more from the brand. So anyway, on the 27th, I ordered from Gilt which is an app where you can buy luxe stuff. I bought a, this was in a duo. So I had a lip chic and then also the this blush. And I actually really like this blush, much like the one shade of the hourglass that I talked about earlier. This off, this performs very similar to that. Like it's a very nice blush, looks very beautiful, very hard to mess up. While it is a nice blush, I hate this packaging. It doesn't feel luxe at all. It feels super flimsy. And when you're paying a premium, it just like feels really gross whenever your packaging doesn't like live up to the experience that I think I have. In fact, this has a scratch in it and I don't know how it has like this big scratch. I don't know if you'll really be able to see it because of the reflection. But I don't even know how that happened, but it's also like, it shouldn't be able, it should be that easy. Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I just, well, I like this blush. It's just like, I don't know that I would buy another Chantecaille blush only because I hate the packaging. It's not even that I want the blush to be bigger because you could make that comment that this compact is pretty small. I, again, I don't run through blush too fast. So it's not like, like you can still, like the butterfly is still there. It's not even like I've worked through it that much to lose the butterfly. So while I like this, I don't think I'd buy another one. Was it a mistake? No, because I wouldn't really have ever known before it. And it's not something that I really am in a rush to get out of my collection either. It just, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. And then I made another purchase from Friends Beauty. So that was from Guilt. And then I also made, on the same day, made a purchase from Friends Beauty. And I bought this Chantecaille Eye Quad. This one is the Butterfly Eye Quad. And at first, I really didn't like this. I really didn't like this. But as my journey with Lux makeup has continued, there's I have a greater appreciation for this. This is so easy. This is so easy and idiot proof and they blend so well. It is too expensive. Like these are very small pants, right? And this was expensive. So it's like on one hand, I'm upset about it. On the other hand, I actually really like these shadows. And being realistic with myself is like, this would also take me a very long time to get through just to pan because it's obviously not a palette I'm gonna reach for every day. But when I want something simple, as I said earlier, these smaller color stories really sing to me. And I really like this duochrome in the bottom here. It's just such a beautiful, everything's so reflective. But these are all satins and like a shimmers. So, but they work really well. It's just unreal how easy these are. I, I should do, I should do, some videos on this so you can just see how it performs but it's just it's just a delight to use it really is and on that same order I ordered the Viseart dark edit 
and this is one of their smaller edited palettes and this is just perfect for fall and I, I just said on another video where like the dark colors speak to me, but I don't use them. And again, so this really spoke to me in such a way and I actually really like it, but I have not used it enough at all, at all. Another thing I like about it is that you can also pop these out and use them as singles, which is like very much the way my collection is now and heading. So I do pull this out if I'm making a self-made palette, I pull this out as potentials to pull from. But now that we are in fall, I'm going to like set this somewhere, make this at the forefront of my mind because I would like to get some use out of it and play with it some more. I like Vizzy Art Shadows historically, so I know that I will enjoy this formula and I have used it a couple times. So I just need to use it. And then on the 28th, from Shantika's website, I don't think I paid full price. I think because I was a new, new customer, they gave me uh, discount, but I got the blurring powder, which I actually did a first impressions video on and I haven't really come back to this powder in a specific way in a video, but I really like this powder. So I, I just talked about how I use, I used three powders today. I, I'm on a powder journey and I think that like, I'm learning that there are powders that can layer and then there's some powders that you cannot layer. And I think I have found like the perfect ones to do some, some some layering to. So what I really like this for is I do I use it for the under eye to set. And then after I powdered the rest of my rest of my face, I like to powder on the apples and my cheeks because that is where I have a lot of texture that I feel like my attention gets drawn to and then on my forehead. So that, so I do it right here under the eyes and on the apples and my cheeks. And that is the only place I really use this. I don't use it as an all over setting powder or setting powder at all. I use the setting powder first and then I use this on top of the setting powder because I find that using this without having another powder underneath it, this will lift whatever I'm wearing, but it will not lift if there's another powder that's previously on it, if that makes any sense to you. So this could definitely be used as a finishing powder. I don't really use it as a finishing powder. I have such a specific way that I do my face. So I really actually like this and you'll see in a second, but uh, I have been enjoying this. I, I like it. I pull it out almost every time I do a look. The only time I really don't use it is when I do my foundation reviews. I try to avoid using this because it does blur and we want to see what the foundation is doing, not what this is doing. That leaves us with nine items that I purchased in February. Four eyeshadow palettes. Who, what, who, on what planet do I think I'm using all of this eyeshadow? I don't know. Something just like this make, you know, I think other, I, there are so many creators who call it the makeup monster and I don't remember who originated it, but like the makeup mo monster just goes blah and just is like, buy that. Which is why we're trying to curb it with the six month no buy. All right, let's move along. I think we're about to talk about my one of my biggest regrets, even though it was a minimal purchase. Okay, on March 4th, I bought this. And this is the Surratt Prismatique Eyes, and I have the shade Mesmerize. And so what it is, it is a duo. And the top is a cream eyeshadow. And the bottom is like a duochrome pressed situation. I bought this in March. I never put it on my eyes. I bought this in March and I've never put it on my eyes. I bought this in March and I have never put this on my eyes. Now it was on sale. These are pretty expensive if you were to buy, like they're, they're in the 50s. So I think Surratt is no longer carried at Sephora even on their website. So this was heavily discounted and then I had a gift card. And so I basically paid nothing for it. And you know, we saw the makeup monster come out of me and do this in my no buy with the Natasha Denona Coral palette, which I bought, but with a gift card. But again, it was discounted. I bought it with a gift card. I didn't pay for it. I certainly didn't need this. I certainly didn't need, I don't even know what to tell you about it. I've, cause I've never used it, but it certainly lives in a drawer. Somewhere in the middle of March, I had a distinct vision for what I wanted my makeup collection to look like come the end of 2021. And it's something that I've been working towards and making happen even in this very moment. And so what that was, I watch a lot of Laura May Beauty and I watch a lot of Hannah Louise Poston. And I don't know if I was watching Hannah Louise Poston this early in the year. I don't remember when I discovered her channel. It was sometime in this year. What they both do that I, I very much saw and was like, oh, oh, that. 
that makes so much sense. That's what I would like my collection to do. Now, everyone has a different approach. I'm not saying that I mimic either one of these creators in a specific way, because I think all three of us, while we have the same mindset, the same end goal, I think we both have approached it differently. So a lot of my collection is palettes, right? And not palettes that where you can remove the pan that was like never really my thing. Like I, I never really had thought about it. But both Lauren May Beauty and Hannah Louise Poston, what they do, if you're not familiar with their content, whenever they are inspired by a palette, but they don't really want to buy it, or maybe think they want to buy it, is what they do is they either dupe the palette with their singles collection or removable pan collection and put together a palette. So that was what I really saw from myself. And that's what I wanted my collection to play to moving forward. So I did a couple big purchases this month in order to set like a ground level, a base level to make that easier for myself. And I did buy them all on a deal. I don't, I'm not really trying to justify this, but like that was what happened. And I was like, this is what I want. And this was also around the time where I was like, I need to slow down. I need to really curb this habit. Although we still have a lot more product to get through before that change really happens. Anyway, so on the 17th, I bought the Viseart Grand Pro one. And I don't love this packaging, but I get it. It's like packaging I get, but I don't love. It looks like this, and it is a selection of matte shades from Viseart. I really like Viseart mattes. I really like them. And so my intention with buying this was, this is a very great groundwork for whenever I want to put together a palette or if I'm feeling inspired enough to make my own palette, these are things that I can pull out. These are gonna, these are gonna definitely give, bring something to my eyeshadow palettes that I'm either duping. So my intention was like, this is a good groundwork. I've used quite a few shades in here, just, you know, playing with other sh palettes, but like I haven't really gotten into them, into them because again, I pull them out whenever I'm doing certain things. Now, Viseart shadows are very easy and very blendable. So if I wanted to do a matte look, I would probably pull this. Like if I was just like, I want an all matte look, this would be the one that I would, that would sing to me. And then on March 27th, there was a sale on Natasha Denona's website. You can buy both of these for $310. And I bought both of them. And I think I've talked about these quite a bit. These are the 28 pan Natasha Denona palettes. And again, just like with the Viseart palette, these are all removable. I can throw them into whatever, but specifically this green one, these are the shadows that really speak to me the most. And I kind of joked in another video that I recorded today that like, I say I love greens. And then like, when you see me and you see my palettes with the greens in them, I swear it doesn't look like I touch them, but I do, I swear to God I do. Again, so the whole purpose that I wanted this, well, this one specifically, I really wanted this one, the purple blue one, I like didn't want as much. But this one really sung to me in such a way. But I was like, when I'm duping out palettes, I would like to have this one. But also, I wouldn't mind having it in my collection if I'm being quite honest. So the this is the purple one, in case you have not seen. So these are just very easy to pop out and put into another palette. It's funny because it looks like I've used this one much more, which I wouldn't be surprised considering I seem to be just lying about my love for the color green. So on April 2nd, Pat McGrath re-released some of the lipstick duos with the lip glitters. And you could buy both of them at a discount and then there was like oh, a 10% off code. And I bought them because I was like, oh, I love my first lip kit so much. And I do, and I actually do do those glitter lips quite a lot. I got the red one in the initial launch. And so these two shades, they are a little bit different. And I have used this one a few times. This, this is more of like a mauve lip color. And then I haven't used this red at all. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have bought it. I, I just, I had like nostalgia for the original glitter lip kits from Pat McGrath and then I bought them and then I was just like, I've never, I, I bought them five months ago or six months ago and I have never touched them. Not really, barely. The other thing about these lipsticks is because of the, I have like a, a square holder for my lipsticks and these really don't hold a space in them. So you just kind of jam them in together and they really don't stand up and then they kind of roll and they like fall out of it. And I also don't just, I forget what colors are in these and they're annoying. Like I just, it's not the best packaging. It's not the best packaging for the forefront of my mind either because 
I forget about them. They're small, they like are small in the drawer, they're hard to see, and they're never at the forefront of my mind. Like I'm never putting a, a book together where I think, I really wanna do glitter lips. Like it's often an afterthought, it's cause I do my lips last. I don't know, does everyone else do their lips last? That's what I do. And then I think Pat McGrath did a sale and I wanted to try one of her highlighters in this baked gelée formula and I bought this guy. So I have used this a handful of times and I really think it's quite beautiful. It's not as blinding as my other highlights, which I think is like the thing that I don't, the reason I don't pull it out as much because this definitely gives a beautiful gloss to the skin. Because it's a baked gelée, it's gonna perform very similarly to this one that I have on from Burberry. So this is the kind of finish you get, but you get like this beautiful rose gold. This is a very beautiful product. The packaging isn't as luxe as the first highlighter she released with that like metal twist off, which I also own. But this highlighter I like better. So, you know, pick and choose, but I don't dislike the highlighter. A lot of people didn't like the highlighter and that heavy thing. I did. It's just, I don't think it's a highlighter that consumers like. I don't really know. I don't know how to describe it. It feels like something, it just like looks very glossy on the skin but like not I don't know really how to perfectly describe it it's just a different formula of highlighter but I'm not mad about this I always love having different options for my highlighter and there was nothing else in my collection that was quite like this shade so it, it definitely added to my collection and it wasn't well it wasn't necessary it's not stealing the shine or being ignored because of another product whenever I want a rose gold highlighter I know that this is the one I'm reaching for because it is the one that I have. April 8th was the part of the Sephora sale, so I did pick up some things. So let's go through them, let's bang them out. I bought the Tom Ford Eye Quad in African Violet. And I bought this after getting the Sextra Terrestrial Green eyeshadow palette from him from Guilt, which we will be talking about that palette in a second. I really like this. There, Again, smaller color story. I do a pretty similar eye look every time I pull this out, but these perform just the way I want them to. I don't, I don't, no one needs Tom Ford eye quads, but if you do want a luxury experience, like, and you don't have a lot of makeup, I don't think these are like, I don't think they're, they're, they're very good eyeshadows. But I would say if you want a luxe experience, I would say like, I would recommend getting, instead of paying $88 for this, if you're already willing to pay $88 for four eyeshadows in a quad, why not spend, why not spend $50 more? But like, why not spend more and get a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath or even a Viseart? Cause I would say Viseart. Well, I like all those other eyeshadows better. I do like, there's something, you know, you feel very fancy holding Tom Ford. And it, it, I don't, the, it doesn't even matter if the product is good. You always just kind of feel that luxury because you're like, this is Tom Ford. I don't keep the coverings and the brushes like some people do because I'm, I, I won't use them, but I know why they're there. I also bought a Westman Atelier blush stick in Puppet. And it is this bright pink. And what's funny is, I think of my cream shadow, cream blushes, sorry, that I like the way this one performs the best. However, I bought a shade that I don't have in my blush collection because it was like trying to fill a space as opposed to buying a shade that I would use a lot. So a hot pink blush is like really not the move for me, like a hot fuchsia, like this really isn't a blush color that I reach for a lot, but I really like this formula and I really like this packaging, like everything about the Westman Atelier, like kind of where I'm at in my makeup journey besides eyeshadow. Like I don't think I would like the iPods too much, but as far as like the clean skin with the easy products to put on, like this very much speaks to me. Why is this jiggling? I feel like every time a product jiggles, I'm like, it's gonna happen. Just like the Victoria Beckham thing. Like I think it's gonna pop out, but this is something I would like to make an effort to use more of, but I also don't do pink looks too often. From Hourglass, I bought the Red Zero the red, the red, red zero. Here's what it looks like. This is the first lipstick that they put their Carmine, their vegan Carmine replacement in. And so that's why I bought it because I really wanted to try it out. And I also kind of wanted to support the idea and the cause of creating a alternative that's vegan, but performs at the same level as Carmine kind of further proving that we do not need to be using animal byproduct or bug byproduct. And it's not, I'm, I'm not saying that as someone, I don't go out of my way to buy vegan product. However, I do believe that all of our products can be vegan. And so I, I wanted to buy this to one, try it. And I actually have no lipsticks from Hourglass. This was my first one. 
very comfortable, very beautiful, very high impact, very easy to use. So it's like a very good lipstick to boot, but I also was very interested in that pigment and, you know, experiencing it. And and I, I don't know, I, I think in my head, I was like, by supporting buying this, and like, if there are good sales, I don't know why in my head, I was like, everything relies on this one lipstick. So I kind of put a lot on this one lipstick when it, it didn't need to be all that. However, I really like this lipstick. I've worn it on camera many times. It's just a stunning color. On May 7th, I bought the Hindash Beautopsy palette. If you're unfamiliar, this is what it looks like. I did a new makeup nonsense bingo and this came up and I was like, I want that. I want that. I want that. And I did want it and I do have it now. So I did buy it. I have it actually, it's all the mattes that I use today are from this. This is a little bit of a, tr this is a bit of a tricky one. I have no regrets buying it. These aren't pressed the way I like my eyes. I like a looser press. These are pressed very tightly. So I feel like sometimes I put my brush in and I can't tell whether or not any pigment comes out because while these, these are very easy to use. And I think that's the beauty of them because they're so hard packed and the formula, they're, they're, they build, right? And they build beautifully and they blend beautifully because of the way they build. This is definitely more artistry focused because the idea is you can like tap your brush into multiples and make your own colors, which I have done. Specifically like today I use like neutrals. So I started with this one on the outermost part to like lay down a transition. And then I kept building the gradient. So I do like one tap in here and then a tap in here and then two taps in here and a tap in here. And just gradually build that gradient all the way down that shape that I do. So I like always draw this shape first on the top with some mattes. And then I worked my way down to this red and then did a red to this tap. So like it, it really does everything that I think Hindash had set out to do. I think if they weren't pressed so tightly, I'd probably reach for this more. But again, as you can see, I bought an overwhelming amount of makeup in six months. So of course this kind of went to the wayside, but using it today was a delight. And it was the first time I had used it in a while. So I very much like this. I have no regrets about it, but it doesn't really fit into that fantasy of being a a removable pan situation which is what I really wanted my collection to be but the curiosity got the better of me but like today I wanted to use some of my Cleona shadows on my eyelids and so what I thought today I was like let's pull out the hint dash let's lay down a base for the, like let's do some mattes first and then lay down our Cleona shadows and it worked so beautifully so I have no regrets about it I just I want to make myself use it more that's really what I've come down to it's like how could something so beautiful and that performs at such an expert level not be used up more in my collection, especially if it's been in it for five months? On May 21st, Pat McGrath launched her blushes. And of course, because I'm a former Pat McGrath addict and stan, I had to have one. So what I actually did as a compromise was I bought one. I got the shade Desert Orchid because this was like a, a standout shade to me. I had nothing in my blush collection that was quite like this. Bought this, got it, tried it on a few times, and then I ended up buying a couple more shades to round out my blush collection. And actually, I have no regrets on these. I really love this formula, especially this shade. This was, if I only had stick with this one, I would feel just, it would, this shade I use so often. I am a sucker for like orange or like coral blushes. So I of course bought, this is Electric Bloom, bought this. And then I also bought Paradise Venus. And all of these shades, I love them all so much. And honestly, within the past couple years, these blushes are my favorite Pat McGrath release. I actually don't really care for this compact. I wish it was whatever she puts the Mothership palettes in, like those kinds of feel. It's just like not as weighted and as luxurious as I would like them to be, but I reach for these a lot. And then on May 28th, I believe this was the final moon drop that Ritual Defeat did. This is their Fawn highlighter. I'm never gonna say I have a regret about a Ritual Defeat metamorphic highlighter like this is it. If you want to see swatches of any of my Ritual Diffie products, I have a video that I did where I swatched them all because I feel like there's a lot of mystique behind the brand. So if you want to check out, I just kind of swatched them so people could see what they look like. So go ahead and check that out if you were interested in seeing what this looks swatched out. That wraps up May. You can see it's starting to decline the amount of purchases. However, I also have a black hole of products that I definitely know I bought this year, but I don't know when because I think I bought everything in person. 
that I'm gonna talk about in that black hole. We're not quite to the black hole, we're gonna talk about the black hole after my last purchase in June. I bought a backup of the Shantikai blurring powder. Let's be fair to me, they did not announce that this was gonna be a permanent product in their line until after I had bought this, which was, and it wasn't long after I bought this, so it was pretty infuriating to see that that was a thing that was happening. Cause I'm not one to buy backups, but since this was a limited edition item and they had released it before, I just didn't know how long it would be. I didn't know if I was gonna use up a fucking powder. Like I'm gonna use up a powder. I have used up powders. Don't get me wrong. I've used up loose powders, but I, 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 the as you can, as I said earlier, I only use it on specific parts of my face. It's gonna take me a long time to get through that, so I have, I just have this in my collection now. I'm a little embarrassed about this. I shouldn't have done this, but you live and you learn, right? And then the last thing I bought in June, and the last thing I bought before my no buy, was from Lethal Cosmetics. It's the Lethal is Dead palette, which is a collaboration with Teresa's Dead. I did a video on my thoughts about this being the last thing I purchased before my no buy. If you want to hear my thoughts on it, I would just check out that video instead of me reiterating here. The long and short of it is I like the eyeshadow quality, but this color story wasn't for me, and I bought it because I liked Teresa. And that was really what ended up happening. Let's get to the black hole of items, which I know I bought this year. So these are more ritual to feet highlighters. I bought these from a local makeup store called The Gilded Girl that my friend runs. And I bought Phosphine, which is that shade, and Moon Pillar based on everything I've said about ritual to feet products before. I'm sure you know that that's not a regret. I bought these in a guilt order and I don't remember when, but this was an order I did together. I bought the Tom Ford Soleil Bronzer in Glow Bronzer in O2 Terra. I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel because I actually really like this product quite a bit because I'm spending a lot of time trying to hit pan on that Burberry bronzer. It's kind of gone to the wayside. I mean, I'm not trying to pan this or anything right now, but this is a beautiful, I would buy it again. <laughs> I would buy it again. I like it that much. I love this packaging. I think they only sell the smaller ones now, but uh, smell, they only sell the smaller ones now. So I really just, I, I like this. This is, I don't think anyone should have to spend 117, but I, you know, as someone who likes beautiful things, as Hannah would say, this really scratches a lot of itches. And because the performance is so beautiful on it, it like really hits the nail on the head. Takes me to all parts of them, all parts, like hits all the makeup corners for me. This item is just like, a remarkable, like a remarkable item for me. But I like bronzers too. I don't have that many because what bronzers ironically are like the one category where I feel satisfied. Like if I have a couple, I'm like, I have three. We're good. We're good on bronzer. We're good on bronzer. So interesting that, but this, I like it a lot. So this is this extraterrestrial palette from Tom Ford. This must've been limited edition because it was on Guilt. I really like this. It's green. It speaks to me. I actually, this is like a really cool duochrome green. I don't know if this shift's gonna pick up, but like, of course this speaks to me. Of course this speaks. I, if you know anything about me at this point, you knew that this would be like a no brainer. I saw it and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna buy that. This was my first Tom Ford quad and it's kind of set the precedent for me to buy more. But then another one I bought during this black hole phase did not like and kind of made me question things. Speaking of that quad, this is the badass quad and this color story is so pretty so stupid pretty this one does not perform like that this one's pretty bad i don't know what it is about it i can get a beautiful look with it but it's a lot of work and my here's my rule for luxury makeup is it has to not feel like work natasha denona shadows are not a lot of work pat mcgrath shadows for the most part are not a lot of work busy art easy breezy most of the time for Tom Ford, easy breezy. But this one is like a laborious palette. It's laborious. <laughs> I say laborious so much. Anytime I'm like in these, like it's laborious. This, so beautiful. And the other thing is I, because I can make it work and I like the looks I do with it, I keep it around. Like I should, I should just get rid of it, but it, it I can get it to work. It just bothers me that like, I should say that about an e.l.f. palette. I shouldn't say that about an 80. Well, I did not buy this at full price, but what was once an $88 eyeshadow palette, I should not have that many issues with. Also bought in the black hole period, and I actually have this foundation on today. This is the Tom Ford Cushion Foundation. This is the Shaded Illuminate Broad Spectrum. 
And this is, I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna open it all the way up. Um, it's a cushion foundation. This is my first cushion foundation I've ever tried. I love this. And it made me want to try more cushion foundations, but the nature of cushion foundations is like, once it's open, you gotta kind of use it until it's gone. So I'm still loving this. Don't need another cushion foundation. I don't even think this exists anymore, this item, because I bought it at the cosmetic company which is like discounted stuff, they discontinued stuff from Estee Lauder's brands. So I also just love this compact. I'm wondering if cushion compacts, like if this is a universal size, if I bought other cushions, if I just bought the refills, if they'd fit in there, that's like, that's my little dream for myself. Also in a black hole period, I think I bought this in March. This is from Natasha Denona, it's the Camel palette. I love this. It speaks to my neutral little soul. I love this a lot. The only thing I don't like, there's one shadow I don't like, and it's this one. I don't like whatever this this formula is because it just like doesn't do anything. Here's more. Here are more black hole purchases. This is all one black hole purchase. My friend brought these for me when she still had her Sephora discount. And when I say she bought them for me, is she bought them for me and I paid her. You're not supposed to do that as a Sephora employee, but she was also on her way out, and I was like, I better get one last Sephora. Sephora order with the Sephora discount in and so I, I did. I bought the Metropolis palette. I love this. I love that. I love this. It really speaks to me in such a way. I love all the golds. I love all the greens. This really, this really, I'm glad I bought this because I sat on it for a while and now I really do enjoy having it in my collection. I bought the Westman Atelier. These are their highlighter sticks. I don't know what, oh that's what they call it. So this is the shade Lit Up. These are more glossy than they are having like any kind of like shimmer to them. Because I like wearing lighter coverage foundations, this works really well, especially like to give you just like a natural glow and not something that's too much. It's very nice. It, it's what I think the Halo Scope highlighters want to be from Glossier. I think that Westman Atelier has achieved that in this, where it is like that easy person on the go, on the cheek, looks gorgeous, is easy. Now, I don't know if this sets down. I have rather short hair, but if you are someone who has hair that might hit your cheek, I don't know if this will stick to you. I don't know if it stays sticky or not. So proceed with caution. Because I don't have that issue, because I don't have hair that hits me on the cheek, I don't think about those things. It's not a, like, so keep that in mind. I bought the Tower 28 Beach Please Power Hour Blush. Can't complain. It, it is a bit pigmented for, it's pigmented and it's clearly meant for a complexion deeper than me, but I don't care. I don't care, it's so pretty. And I normally keep it on closer to the back of my cheek. I don't normally bring it all the way to the apple, so I'll do a couple dots back here and just kind of blend down gently and not kind of take it all the way to the apple of my cheek because of the depth of this product. And I bought Euphoric Fusion from Hourglass. Had to get one more in at the tail end to get another blush from them. Again, my favorite blush formula is the Hourglass, so to have more shades made sense. And like a damned fool, I bought a backup. This one's a little more complex. I, I ha I'm almost done with a Too Faced Born This Way Sculpt and Conceal, whatever, multi-use Sculpt and Concealer. And then all of a sudden, and this, I wore a lot of like full coverage dense looks, <laughs> not dense, but you know, dense. I, my looks were a lot for Sephora. And it, I found that like full coverage did better under the mask for me, like something with a matte finish. Since I stopped working at Sephora, I've shifted the type of complexions that I enjoy to being more of a light coverage. Medium at most is like really what I what I will top at. I still have full coverage foundations in my collection because I do sometimes want to do like an IG look, you know, where I really do the whole thing, but it's not something I'm reaching for often. And so now I have this concealer that would look really terrible with my lighter coverage foundations because this is full coverage. So full coverage on full coverage makes sense, but like full coverage, with something that has no coverage, almost like very little coverage, this is gonna look really ridiculous with. So I'm still working on the other one. I might pass this on to a friend or something. Cause I, while I, while I still like this concealer, it's actually still, it's very good concealer. I'm not taking that away from the product. It just, it's like not a concealer I will continue to use. But I have a lot of friends who perform in drag. So, a lot of them are fair. I have some friends who are fairer skin who might be able to use this for drags because I think it would work really well as far as coverage goes. 
but we'll see. I haven't decided, but it is a backup I have, which is so stupid. I don't do backups anymore. We're not doing. We're not doing it anymore. Okay. Now we have. We've come to my shame. We've come to my shame. We've come to the shame. Okay. And the shame is the coral palette from Natasha Denona, which I bought because it was on sale, not because I wanted it. And I bought it because I had a gift card, and I really wasn't breaking my no buy because I didn't make the rule that if I use a gift card, that it was using money. So I have it. It's very pretty. I've worn it a couple times. I do enjoy it. I really like this shade right here. And again, it does serve like a multifunction purpose where I can use this to make my own color stories. And you know, I like the Natasha Denona formula, so it doesn't hurt my collection. But I certainly didn't need it. And then my controversial final shame, which I've talked about in my most recent check-in, as far as my no-buy goes, is the Natasha Denona Gold Palette, which I picked up because it was a palette that I've always wanted. This is all during my no-buy, by the way. I bought this during, I, so I'm saying that outright, admittedly. I've already talked about this, though. I, it was a palette I always wanted. I always intended on buying. Didn't know it was gonna go away. It went away. It came back in stock at Sephora, and I, I grabbed it. I did use a gift card to pay for part of this, so it wasn't like I spent the entire amount. Not trying to justify that in any kind of way. I just am like explaining that to you. So, anyway, I bought this because I know I would get a lot of good use out of it because it definitely speaks to me and my color story. There's gonna be definitely a purge of some stuff at the end of this year going into the next year or like at the beginning of next year when I'm doing a reconsideration of my collection. So I'm keeping that in mind too is that like not all of this stuff is gonna stick around. Okay that's it for the mini reviews. I totaled it up. I added it up. I spent on beauty in the first half of this year, a little bit on the second half of the year, is $2,191.44. Since the no buy started, which I should technically be zero, since the no buy was instilled out of pocket that I have paid that came out of my bank account is $105. So in the first half of the year, I spent over $2,000 on beauty. Makeup. That's not even including skincare because I don't include skincare and beauty. I don't, I like what I like in skincare. I like kind of just repurchase skincare. So I like, there's expensive skincare that I like, but I don't have the same issue with skincare that I have with beauty, which is, this is why I instilled this no buy, which is clearly working. The Natasha Denona gold palette is like the one exception that has like that big question mark over it. However, it is like, I don't know, spending $100 in the second half of the year versus $2,100 in the first half of the year. I think the no buy is working even though I didn't fully see it all the way through as a 100% no buy. So I guess technically I've been on a six month low buy. So if I had paid full price though, because I have discounts and sales and stuff, I would have spent over $2,900. So I did save about $800. If you think, I, I don't, I don't want to think about the savings and not the spendings, but it is nice to know that I almost, like it would have been $3,000 if I hadn't waited for sales and opportune times to purchase them. So if you watched this whole video and saw all of those mini reviews, wow, thank you so much for spending an hour of your time with me. I really do appreciate it. If you also made it this far and you enjoyed yourself, go ahead and like that. Go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe. If you liked my nuanced, and I am a nuanced baguette, this is the place to find those nuances. Am I right? Ladies, am I right? If you want to hear more of my voice, as if you didn't hear it enough for the past hour plus, you can hear it more on a couple of podcasts. You can listen to this podcast in the description box below. There's a link tree. Click that link tree. It'll take you to all of the places that I exist. So Instagram, my personal home address. I'm just kidding. That's not there. Do not come to my house. I did not invite you here. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Friends.